Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's edition of Between the Spreadsheets. My guest today is Keith McCoy, um, financier extraordinaire, and he's come to tell us all about the pitfalls and uh, maybe some interesting stories about mortgages and finance and insurance and all that type of thing. So, uh, Keith, th thanks, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I remember I've known you quite a long time now, and I remember when, when, well, when you were, when you were younger and you used to run around my my lounge in your little shorts and everything. And um, yeah. but, um, we, we've, we've come a long way since then. No one's known me that long. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how's the mortgage market? Is it is it uh, how's it going? Mortgage market is um, strange at the moment. It's very very difficult. Obviously, we've had COVID. Yeah. Everybody's working from home, which yeah. is which is the mortgage lenders, yeah. uh, the solicitors. Getting the surveys done has been difficult. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the local authorities are working from home, so when the solicitors yeah. are calling for the searches, mm. rather than taking maybe a few days, um, six, seven, eight weeks to get the wow. searching out, is that, is that because they don't have computers? Because they're working from home, so just the logistics. Of, so can't know. they access the same logs that they, they normally do? No. Sorry? Can they not access the, the computer logs? Oh, I guess not, for whatever the reason. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, then added to throwing in the mix, we've got um, a stamp duty holiday. Yeah. Which expires on the 31st of March. Right. So we've known about that for some months now. Chancellor brought it in to you know boost boost yeah. the economy during COVID. Yeah. So everybody's piling in and buying houses because if you're buying the you know the, the, the sort of mid to higher end of the market, you potentially you could save fifteen thousand pounds mm. stamp duty. Yeah. So throw all that into the mix. It's very very difficult to, to get things through. The lenders are not answering the phone. We get the mortgages through. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's taking a long time. Yeah, so it's it's just a red tape and uh, bad organisation of of the yeah logistics yeah. of everyone working from home not going into the office. Yeah, every day. yeah. yeah. no, it seems to that because I know I know I've been working from home and I know that um, well I've not really been working from home but other other people in the office have and they've um, they, they they've not really had any problems because they can access a uh, centralised database and pull all the information they want so. I, I don't know. I, I I find this dealing with, with government operations that uh, people seem to use working from home as as um, an excuse not to get things done. But the strange thing is there are some lenders, um, you know, quite big high street people, but not the very yeah. big ones, where they're still yeah. still answering the phones. Yeah. Um, but the really big lenders, I think they're using it as an excuse. To be honest, you know, not. Yeah. To... Well, I think so because if somebody phones our number. It it doesn't matter where somebody is in the world; it just gets channeled to the next person to answer the phone. So, I, 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 if we can do it, our little company, I, I don't see why the big lenders and big mortgage companies. Well, you know, in March and April last year, you know, the first couple of months, fair enough, everybody was caught short. You know, yeah. they've had almost a year now to get this. Yeah. Sorted. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's where we are. So we can yeah. still get deals. The, the market yeah. is still very competitive mortgages out there. Yeah. More difficult at the top end because that because of the restrictions are capping the amount they're lending. So if you're looking for a million, you're going to struggle. Right, um, and that's why 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 are they doing that now? I don't know. I think they just well. First of all, we we had a lot of ninety five percent products before the right. shutdown, and they cut those straight away down to a maximum of eighty eighty five percent. Right. Right. They've come back as one or two lenders now. There's a few now offering ninety percent, but they've limited the amount using yeah. five hundred thousand. Yeah. It's limiting the number of the flow through of work. You know, yeah. So that yeah. they keep on top. I, I I I mean that's traditionally obviously the more money people have to put into their home, the the, the possibly more committed they are and less likely they are to struggle with, with payments they can't afford. I suppose that's something. I think but, that's right. And from your yeah. perspective, Stephen, I mean, the, the number of uh, mortgage defaults on self-employed people is very low. Yeah. Very yeah. low. Yet it's more difficult for a self-employed person to get a mortgage. Yeah, I, I can see that because I, I find that self-employed people in general are, are more likely to, they've got more around them that they can hustle and 
and they can control their income more. So if, if they're not earning, they can just pick up the phone and or go knocking on doors, you know, in, in, a, in a convention, not, not, not physically knocking on doors, although they can, but they can, they can control their income a lot better. And usually when people are self-employed, if things are going bad, they can see it and maybe get something set up ready. Whereas if you work for somebody, and, and you spend above your means, you've got no real way of increasing your income. And if you're if you're sacked or lose your job, then you're you're at, you're at stage one. So I've never understood this because I would have thought that self-employed people are a better, safer bet than um, um, employed people. But, well, that's right, and they understand money, don't they? They handle yeah. it every day. You know, they yeah. have good times, bad times. You know, times yeah. when you're self-employed, times can get a yeah. bit tough. But you watch the money, don't you? Because that's how you survive. That, that, that's right. And I've never understood why this that why this world is so stacked up against business people, against small businesses. I, I've um, I, we deal with hundreds and hundreds of people across the country, and I can think of so few of them that that don't do everything they can to pay anything they need to and, and keep their commitments. Because I remember, if a self-employed person gets into trouble, it's not just his house at risk; it's his entire livelihood. Absolutely, yeah. lose everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, 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 I'm glad you made that point because it's very close to my heart. You know, being a champion of small businesses. But um, what one one thing I was I was just talking just before you you came on the show because we were saying that mortgages it's quite boring. You know. You know, it's an it's a needs to an end. So, what what would I talk to you about? So, I thought, you know, how how do you see the the property market going? Because with the price of especially city centre properties, are people being priced out, and that they're going to go to just renting properties? What I am seeing is um, already I've I've had um, a few inquiries, and I'm handling um, two or three cases where people work in the city, but they're moving out to the country. That's what we were saying, wasn't it? Ed, sorry, Ed's our PR guy, and yeah. he's, he's here, but you won't be able to see him. He's in the background watching the show. But yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Just that. Uh, yeah, I mean, someone who works in the city, and he's been told he can do one or two days a week, you know, mm. going yeah. forward, you know, not yeah. just, just in the COVID time. But yeah. Because I think companies are going to they're going to look at this, the cost of a square foot in the city, aren't they? And think, do we need offices oh. as big as this? Um, Absolutely. Let's have, you know, you can do a couple of days a week in the office, swap desks. Mm. Um, everybody wins, really. You know, yeah. less traffic, less less commuting. Yeah. Well, I was I was talking to one of my colleagues just just before, and he's he's sort of like he's a bit like me, but he's not as bad as me. He's shielding, but not he's he's not as ill as I've been. But he's he's um he he was saying that he gets probably twice as much work done from home, but he misses seeing people. And I said, well, you can go online and you can talk to people like we're talking now. And after a while, it becomes the same thing, except you can talk to have a lot more meetings and uh, you, you don't have to get up and make everybody coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, some people miss the chat around the water cooler. Yeah. But yeah. if you do a couple of days a week in the office. Yeah. But what do you think is going to happen to, to air travel going forward? I mean, the people yeah. want to jump on a plane for a meeting. You know. Yeah. Well, you don't need to. You, you no. don't need to. You, no. you can talk to somebody the other side of the world as if they're next door to you, can't you? Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward I to that. That will affect the housing market. And, you know, if you yeah. can go out and, uh, you know, for the price of a one bedroom flat in London, you can buy a very nice house in Manchester, can't you? Yeah, or, you can. You, you can. Know. But you could go further, couldn't you? Because you could go to Miami or you, you could go to the Gold Coast or you could go somewhere very pretty and still have your job in your London or Manchester based firm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah, changes. But uh, yeah, so so that's really the mortgage market. But uh, I think going, pardon me, going back to the self-employed side of things, um, it's very difficult to get them if you don't know where to look. Yeah. You do yeah. know where to look. You can get yeah. some great deals. Um, yeah. For example, you could knock on, you could go to your bank, you could walk down the local high street knocking on three or four doors and they would turn you down. But I know of one high street lender where they will, you know, they look at every self-employed application and rather than use your declared income to HMRC, they will use your profits. Yeah. Yeah. So 
So if you haven't taken the money out of the company because you don't need it, it's still in the company, but, you know, yeah. it's not going to show up on your HMRC documents, your personal tax, but it's there in the accounts. So they take limited company profits into account as well, not just your own, That's your right. own income. Yeah, but is, is it knowing where to look as well and how to package things? Because I wouldn't oh, know how yeah. to package a mortgage. Yeah, I mean, I have over 70 lenders that I can yeah. use. And yeah. so it's knowing where to look, but absolutely how to package it because that's yeah. by, because you can do it wrong. Nothing, you, you know, you're not, you're not saying anything that's in, that's wrong, that's, you know, a lie, but you just package it up wrong yeah. and the deal gets declined. And of course, somebody like yourself, you know a lot of the actual lenders by first name, so that must that's give some credibility. <laughs> It's the experience and it's the contacts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, business development managers of all the lenders, they all, you yeah. know, they're all available to me. So I can pick up the phone and say, you know, yeah. what do we think of this particular case, you know, and, and they'll say, yeah, you're no. Yeah, and they're likely to trust what you say has more credence than just an application from some stranger, which is always interesting. Yeah. It's always a help. Yeah. But, but it's not just, um, it's not just, residential mortgages you do because i know just before lockdown i was looking at buying some some offices wasn't i and i think within a couple of weeks you'd got me an offer that's right i mean uh, um, commercial mortgages yeah um, they're, they're very much available even if your bank says no you know you yeah can, if you're an investor or as, as you were Stephen, as a you know an owner occupier yeah yeah um, that's a good rate rate yeah both of them, and, and yeah, those yeah. kind of deals are available. They're available now. Well, what is difficult now is is um, retail premises because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. So yeah. factory, you know, the retail is, is is on its back at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, but there's still an angle, isn't there? There's there's still an angle. Um, oh, for, uh, for, yeah, you can still get them through. Yeah. But yeah. It's case you present of, them right. The person who's looking for it can he produce a good business plan. Yeah, yeah. The no, well, that's that's right. I know, I I, I know people that they, they've they've moved their businesses more and more online, and they're finding that they're repurposing the bricks and mortar shop into storage and photography. Right. You, you know, so they've they've got like one room which used to house, you know, in this particular case, belts, and that's now the the photography room, and the uh, they've extended the storage into the showrooms. And now that they're they're doing eighty percent of the business online, uh, you, you know, more and more are going that way. It will need to stay that way after COVID. Yeah, I I think it will because I I think it's been heading this way for for quite a while now, and I think the COVID's been the last push to 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 make it more. This is the norm. I don't think it's a terrible norm. I mean, when when we do go back to normal, as normal as we can get, I would imagine that there'll be that more social element of of the of retail now having more like like the old days where, where you'd go looking at um at sort of more bespoke products and more more sort of entertainment value where the flagship of say boots can be demonstrating their main products and it's more of a fun type day out uh, That's things I mean. go in circles don't they and, they uh, do they do because what 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 else can you you know there's there's nothing you know what once you've got the internet there what 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 can you do so it does have a knock on effect of value of properties but only if if um, you don't repurpose them I mean I, I would imagine that people especially if they live out of the city centres and they they do have fairly decent homes or land that they'll start utilising that I mean my my nephew lives um, lives in the countryside near the other side of Blackpool. And he he's got land and he's got um, like big silos on it, which he's turned into storage. And so he op he operates a whole distribution point from from there. Yeah. You know, selling everything online. Yeah. I mean, so you mentioned a few minutes ago about you know you champion small businesses, which yeah. is absolutely true. But we all give a better service, don't we, small businesses? Definitely. Um, Definitely. If you look at my industry, you know the mortgage, uh, the mortgage industry, mm. we have so many really fantastic competitive rates. Yeah, I mean, with, with so many lenders, they're all competing. Yeah, and if they become expensive, if the rates become too high, they lose yeah. the business. 
people that you know yeah. brokers don't don't give them any business, so yeah. they, they suffer. So it, it really is a marketplace where they have to be competitive. Oh, it is. But you're quite easy to talk to as well. I mean, you've 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 arranged finance for me, my daughter, my son. Um, to, you know, I think my daddy did something. Yeah. The point I was going to make there is you've got these competitive products and there are plenty yeah. of. Them. Yeah, but the service you get from the banks is awful. Oh, it's it's yeah, yeah. I did, the, you know, I won't even phone the banks anymore. I I have uh, Melanie. Uh, you know, if I've got anything, can you just phone the bank? Well, they won't speak to me. We'll just phone them till you get them on the phone. And I I just you know I can't stand the you know half an hour to get through to somebody. That's all you want. You know, it's not a big deal. You just want an answer to a question. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I think everybody should go through a mortgage broker because yeah. you know. We've got the choice of the best rates, yeah. but you're actually going to get a personal service, you know, an old you are. And it doesn't add much to it. It's not expensive using a broker, is it? Yeah. And then you've got all your connections and you can just sit back and do nothing. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I offer an end to end service. I've got the network of lenders. I also have yeah. you know, solicitors, also have life insurance companies. I can arrange valuation, you know, if you yeah. want to survey. Um, Got buildings and contents, you know, home insurance. So, so quickly, so quickly. I know when I was looking at that commercial property before COVID, I know I said to Melanie, you know, looking to buy this, and I spoke to Keith, and he's going to sort it for me. And the next morning, we had a couple of uh, contacts. One, one was from a lender with just to clarify a few points, and another one was from a surveyor organising when he can come down and value it. And that was like, I think I spoke to you about three o'clock, and then the next day by ten o'clock, I had both of the things going on. So you know, and then then you do something else as well because I'm notoriously bad at filling forms in. So you chase me for it. <laughs> you say, Stephen, have you got that? And and I know you want to swear at me, but you, you're very polite. And well, very that, that is, yeah. I mean, who likes filling in forms? Um, I love it. Love filling in forms. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm just having a form designed at the moment, which will be online. Yeah. Really secure. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. totally secure, confidential. Yeah. It will be online, so I can, you know, my Mortgage questionnaire, the fact find, which I which I yeah. have to have filled in. So if someone, wherever they are, you know, that they can just log on. I I can just open up the phone line to them yeah. and talk them through it. You know, five ten minutes on the phone, make sure that yeah. you know guide them through it. And job done with that single form. Then I, you know, I've got everything I need to go and source them all. No, love 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 it love it. So so you you, you take all the hassle out of it. That's right. Well, that, that's what we do, isn't it? We're a good broker. So, what if you if if someone comes along, they're in business, and they want to take on a mortgage? What's your what what's I know there's no one thing, but what's the biggest uh, advice that you would give? What what's the most important thing you tell people to do? Well, tell me everything because yeah. you know what's and all because I can filter out what we do and don't need. Yeah. Um, that helps me to, you know, source the, the right mortgage, and and I tell them to speak to you guys if they're yeah. in business. You know. Oh, just to check through the accounts of reflecting what it should re reflect. And, your accounts and to, yeah, and, and and also I will say, don't you know, if you think if I can't do anything for you now, or you're thinking moving, yeah, touch with me and your accounts and have the conversation yeah. twelve months before. You know, you want plan for it, yeah. To make yeah. sure that, uh, we've, you've got, we've, we've done that. We said, look, you're not going to get it now, but if you do this, this, and this, then you, you know, then um, six months time, you, you should be fine. That's that's right, exactly. Yeah, that. yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it works very well. And then, of course, the other thing is that I can offer them an ongoing service, which yeah, I endeavour to call everybody before their fixed rate is due to end. Oh right. Of course, rather than going on to a standard variable rate, mm. you know, we'll, um, I usually give them two choices, um, a rate switch with their existing lender, see what they're offering, or the best of the rest from the whole of the market. Right, so, right. Well, so, yeah. so it's an ongoing service, really, that um, yeah. being a small broker, you know, I know all the customers. Yeah. Uh, and it seems to work for everybody. Mm. No, it's, it's it's all very good advice. Well, well, I'm I'm glad you've come on the show, Keith, because even though I thought the subject might have been a bit dry and I might have to bring in some new discussion bits, I haven't had to ha haven't had to, and and I hope everyone listening to this gets um, 
gets all the information they need and, and feels a bit comfort, you know, more comfortable in dealing with you and if it's not you, another broker, but preferably yourself. Um, anybody watching this, they, they can see below coming up Keith's contact details. So do feel free to contact Keith direct, but if you're a bit shy, you can come through me and I'll put you on to Keith. Um, so um, we're coming to the end of today's um, today's podcast. So um, I'm, I'm, thank you for joining us and I'll see you on the next one. And Keith, I'll, I'll see you on our next batch of customers that are desperate for mortgages. Yeah. Take, take care, everybody. Welcome. Goodbye.